Hello there. My name is John Meyer. I recently filmed a video for the launch of a new restaurant here in Dallas, Texas, and I wrote some custom music for the video, and I want to tell you how I did it. Earlier this spring, I was asked by a friend of a friend to shoot a short video to coincide with the opening of a restaurant in Dallas called The Meridian. And I want to break down the video from the perspective of us composers. And I hope that by talking about the equipment I use and the process of shooting and editing the video, it'll give you a better insight into how the process works, which will only make you a better composer and may even inspire you to pick up a camera and start making your own videos. Almost every frame of the video was shot with my Sony A7S III, what I am filming myself with now. It's far more camera than I could ever need but it's incredible. It checks all the boxes for the run and gun filmmaker, which is basically what I am. I use two lenses, a Sigma 24 to 70 and a Sony 20 millimeter, which I purchased just a few days before the shoot. And that's the lens I'm using right now as well. It's a great wide angle lens and it's especially great in a room like this because it makes it look quite large, even though it's not. For most of the shoot, I had my Deity D3 Pro microphone, which is what I'm using right now on top of the camera. However, I used very little, if any of the sound that came from it because the noise inside the kitchen made it almost useless. So I had to replace the chopping and sizzle sounds and all that, which I'll discuss later in the video. The original plan was to shoot the commercial on a day leading up to the opening of the restaurant. But due to a handful of delays out of my control, we ended up having to shoot everything on the first friends and family night. So every person involved in the launch of this restaurant was very busy and very serious about what they were doing that day. So we shifted from a more choreographed, shot by shot, storyboard approach to a run and gun, capture anything and everything approach while trying not to get too much in the way of the chef and the servers as they were working so hard. Not an ideal situation, but it made for a fun challenge. The nice thing about the run and gun approach is that I was able to capture everyone in their element. A few of the shots were staged, but for the most part, I was filming the cooks and the servers focused entirely on their particular job for that day. I wasn't alone for the day. I had my friends Jordan and Ariel there to help. And one of the things I asked them to do was to remind me to shoot vertical. Because although the main video would be wide format, I knew there would be an edit for smartphones, Instagram. So I needed to be reminded to turn the camera sideways. I don't want to get too techy, but I did shoot the video in two different frame rates, 23.976 for a realistic feel, like real time, and 60 frames per second for shots that I wanted to slow down and post. So the high frame rate allows you to slow it down, but also do some speed ramps and speed warping so that I could work it in with the video and adjust the pace of the video. We decided earlier in the day that we wanted to capture four main elements, prep, garden, drinks, and food. For the prep section, we wanted to capture the staff getting ready, you know, folding napkins, putting on aprons, setting the table, all that stuff, just basically getting ready for the excitement of the day. A very unique aspect of this restaurant is that it has its own garden. The restaurant is actually part of a massive apartment complex that every 20 something Dallasite lives in at least in some point in their life. So we walked over to the garden, which is in the middle of the complex, and I filmed the chef picking spices and vegetables to be used in the food that evening. Mixing drinks always looks cool on camera, so we filmed the bartenders doing their thing. The last section, which is the main section, was us trying to capture the energy in the building throughout the evening. Wide, establishing shots of guests enjoying themselves and tight, detailed shots of the food being made, plated, and served. The edit was fairly straightforward. It followed the shooting day chronologically, prep, garden, drinks, and food. And for those that care about color correction and color grading, I shot with the Sony S-Log3 picture profile, which means the image is very flat. And in audio terms, it's like it's compressed in a way. And then when you go into post and you add what's called a conversion LUT, it basically unfolds the image, decompresses the image. And now you have your brights and your shadows and the colors, and it looks so nice. It's so thrilling to finally see what the camera actually captured. One thing that made the color correction and the color grading, which color grading is like adding your Instagram filter to your photo, is that the color temperatures throughout the building were very different. There were giant windows letting in sunlight, but there was warm light in the kitchen. So getting those to balance out was a bit of a challenge. And finally, last but not least, the music. I only had a few days to turn around the video, so my initial plan was to use a pre-existing production music track, perhaps something I had written in the past, but I can't help myself, so 
I wrote a custom piece. The restaurant has a modern Brazilian theme, so I wanted to write something with a modern Brazilian sounding theme. I talked to the chef, he gave me some ideas, but admittedly, this sound is not exactly in my wheelhouse. So like all my other production music tracks, I had to research and I Googled Brazilian bossa nova chord progressions and settled on a few chords. Once I had that basic progression, I started on the percussion. And I must admit that I grabbed a loop from Splice. And I know that's not the best thing to do. I hardly ever do it. But with this situation and the time restraints, I thought it made sense. If I ever revisit the track, I'll probably replace it with a percussion track of my own. But for now, this will work. I didn't stress too much about the instrumentation because I knew from the start that I wanted sound design elements to play a big part. Not just to throw them in to create some atmosphere, but I wanted them to be part of the rhythm of the track. <laughs> and so I filled up a folder full of sound effects from chopping sounds and sizzle sounds and garden, birds chirping and all that. And I worked them into the rhythm. And then I found the images that I liked and I matched them to the rhythm of the track. Like I mentioned earlier, none of the audio was from the day, so I had to replace it. And my favorite sound that I replaced was this meat slicer. So I want you to listen and try and guess what sound I used. If you said bicycle chain, then pat yourself on the back. Learning to use my camera has taught me so much about the relationship between moving images, uh, sound design, and music. Obviously, I've made a significant time and monetary investment into learning the art of filmmaking. But for you, the simple act of taking your camera, filming a few shots, laying them on a timeline, writing some music, add some Foley and sound design, that's only gonna make you a better composer and it's gonna help you better communicate with those who are creating the images that you are writing music to. Well, that's all I've got for this week. Stick around, watch the full video, and I'll talk to you very soon.